So I'm hoping that the idea of deception uh, impeding collective intelligence is pretty, <laughs> pretty obvious. We need, we need to have, uh, we need to be able to face reality and what's going on inside people is a major part of reality in any social collective kind of situation. And so we need some access to that. We need to know what's going on. What's your story? How are you doing? Whatever. Uh, what are you about? Uh, so to the extent there is deception going on, we don't have access to that. So it generates collective ignorance. You know, if one person is hiding important information, uh, keeping it from the general pool of knowledge, the collective, the group, the society is now ignorant of that. And so they act without knowing that. And those actions uh, don't align with reality to that extent and create failure. And even because often the uh, withholding is in some kind of defense of one's own interests. And so the, the, uh, the interest profile of the collective gets lopsided uh, towards the, the psyche of the person who is withholding or the group that is withholding, whatever. So it is important to, to the extent we can, and I, I put this term um, as, we, as we can in, to, uh, so we represent ourselves and our views, feelings, intentions, and knowledge as truthfully as we can in life-serving ways as we interact. So you can be open in ways that undermine other people that undermine the aliveness of the social and uh, larger systems that you're part of. So we're, we're part, we're being conscious here of how we share what's going on, but we recognize that there's a, there's a downside. If we uh, withhold important information, uh, we are potentially um, reducing the collective intelligence of the group that we're part of. Uh, and if we put out, information that is uh, unnecessarily disruptive and harmful, uh, we are also potentially undermining the collective intelligence of our group. So we're holding both of those. So we're representing ourselves. That's who am I? What am I capable of? What am I, uh, what am I here for? What am I doing? And my views, you know, these are the things I think. This is as close as I can. This is a description of what I see. Uh, and here's what I feel, what I need, here's the intentions, what I'm, what I'm here at this point, what am I here for? Uh, and my knowledge and my ignorance also part of representing, authentically representing your knowledge is authentically representing your ignorance and saying, well, I really don't know. Being willing to say, I don't know without feeling that that's uh, undermining your reputation, your status, your ego, whatever. Uh, and so we're trying to be truthful and truthful, truthful is an aligning between uh, what is stated or presented and what's real. And we are, we are trying to align with what's real. We are trying to act on the basis of what's real. And what's real is, you know, the factual material reality and also the, the social reality, the consciousness reality, the who we are reality, that's part of what's real that we're trying to operate in congruence with. Uh, so the more we all show up as um, who we are and speak and act uh, as who we are, uh, we are able collectively to generate more, uh, more alignment, collective alignment with what is with what's actually going on. Um, so understanding in order to generate uh, broad benefits, uh, we need to understand what's needed, you know, what are the different, that's both for the people involved and the groups involved, what do they need, what do we need, uh, and to be able to put that forward. And also what does the situation require to be able to understand here's the dynamics of what's going on that we need to be mindful of as we go about trying to generate our broad benefits as part of our effort to you know, be wise together. 
uh, and what's real, what's actually here uh, in, this, in this situation that we're facing and available, available to us as resources. You know, to the extent we represent ourselves fully to each other, suddenly we find out that there's all these things that people have and gifts that they bring and capacities they have. Uh, even, you know, oh, they have a, a tool in the library that I need that I didn't even know was anywhere in my network. So I was going to buy one. Well, we can get one free just by borrowing Sam's. You know, it's like uh, the sense of us being uh, open about ourselves and our lives uh, creates all sorts of resources we might not even have been aware existed before. Uh, and this is especially us, us being real in present time. Here's, here's how I am now. I may have been different five minutes ago or five months ago or five years ago, but this is how I am now. And to the extent people are persist in being authentic, uh, then as conditions change, there is information uh, that is available constantly uh, from the group that is being real. So if suddenly you see something you didn't notice before, you know, you withhold it because you don't want to upset the apple cart. It may be very important to upset the apple cart because the apple cart is going <laughs> in the wrong direction. Or we're supposed to have pears in the cart instead of apples, whatever. It's like the, uh, the emperor's new clothes is a great example of that. The, you know, the emperor is naked because he's been led to believe that the clothes these charlatans are selling him are uh, magical and that anybody who is who is uh, uh, who has ill ill will won't won't be able to see the clothes. So everybody's trying to act like they're all good people and that they actually see the clothes, even though they don't. And then this kid, who sees? There's no no clothes there. Says, "Why is he up there naked?" You know, it's like he's being authentic. The other people are not, and the whole kingdom is being foolish. Uh, So when I think of resources for that, uh, the, in terms of processes, processes like nonviolent communication and dynamic facilitation, which involve uh, the, the evocative, they're evocative, they're reflective and evocative. It's like the, the person who's doing NVC or the person who's doing dynamic facilitation is, um, is trying to understand in a public way what's going on for this other person and to check it with that other person. So there's a, the, the, um, the match between what's going on internally for people and what is available in the public space is to a certain degree um, uh, supported, if not determined, uh, ensured by the way NBC and dynamic facilitation do reflective listening, empathic listening. Uh, so that's, that's a sort of systemic approach to this. And there's a funny way in which science, uh, science is helping us align with reality, including the uh, replication. You know, there's a, if you do an experiment and come up with something and you report it as you reported it, then there's this, you know, this effort to see if that's really what reality is telling us. Uh, by replicating the, the scientific experiment. Uh, the, and there's, in this larger society, there are laws against fraud and libel and perjury. Uh, fraud and libel and perjury are all different ways of uh, representing what's not true uh, as if it were true. So the society in its effort to function uh, with some level of collective intelligence says we're going to we're gonna mini minimize these, we're gonna punish these. We're, we don't want these things in our midst any more than absolutely necessary. So there are constraints on the efforts to be uh, false in your representations. Uh, and also reputational systems. Uh, we have with as reputational systems in small towns where everybody kind of knows each other and workplaces, and sometimes those are horribly distorted. Uh, but the sense of somebody, uh, somebody who has integrity uh, and is honest uh, will usually rise up in a reputational system 
and be seen and respected uh, and somebody who is a, uh, always lying and fraudulent and uh, messing with people will go down in the reputational system. So even though there's lots of things that can be manipulated and messed with in reputational systems, it's still, uh, there's a sense of a broad brush stroke. That's a really useful thing. There's lots of online, you know, Amazon reviews and people giving points, you know, how many stars for this or that person or product, uh, that that's a system for doing it. And there's ways to make sure that they are, that they themselves are more honest, that the, your review is, is uh, you know, people put out a review that trashes somebody or something and others comment on that review saying this is not really uh, truthful. Uh, somebody has an ax to grind or it's irrelevant or whatever. So there's a many, when you, when you have layers of reputational system laid on top of each other, it can help, uh, it can help crowd crowdsource uh, the integrity of the whole system and the integrity of the people participating. And there's practices like radical honesty. You know, people actually take workshops in uh, overcoming their resistance to saying where they're at uh, and being willing to live in the disturbance that happens as a result of that and working with whoever is disturbed to uh, come to a better place, a more life-serving place, but to get over that initial uh, impulse where we, we have to hide in order to survive, we have to hide in order to not hurt people. Uh, and you know, uh, so radical honesty is one uh, experiment in doing that, uh, in getting beyond our resistance to being fully authentic.